just to give us a little background, uh, how, how did he end up in Mexico, and, and what do you have any idea about the circumstances? He was driving from California, was simply going to a restaurant. He was in his truck. I had, the signage was very poor. He wound up in, across the Mexican border. He had a couple of guns in his truck, which he notified the customs officials there at the San Ysidro checkpoint that they were there. A customs official was going to escort him back across the border. Unfortunately, a Mexican soldier insisted that he be taken and thrown in a Mexican prison, so he overruled the customs official. At that same checkpoint, um, Sergeant Tamarosi did try to, uh, he called 911, but was told by American officials that he was on his own. The reason I'm down here is my husband was on a graduate of Marine Command and Staff College, and if that was our son in Mexico, He'd be here with me. Unfortunately, he's passed away. But I'm here because I want that young man home, and I want his family to be proud to have had a Marine in their family. Well, this demonstration is about freeing the Marine that's been locked up in the Mexican jail for 100 days. That's why we're out here. Each and every one of us have responsibilities on our own, going in, doing jobs or whatever. But we're coming out here to serve our country and, serve, and to make sure this Marine gets uh, free today. There's supposed to be a trial for him today. And let's hope that they... I was speaking to a, the guard, the Mexican guard in there, and I told him about... I says, your country, they got a bunch of uh, Mexicans down there that are corrupt, just like the corrupt Mexicans in this country, the cor corrupt people in this country. And I said, that's what the problem is. And he says, he agreed with me. They're good people. These Mexican people, ordinary people here, they're good people. So we, all we should do is let my boycott in Mexico. Let's talk about freeing this uh, soldier. President Obama, you've been driving around this country telling everyone that you have a phone and you have a pen. Well, my suggestion would be, sir, that you would pick up that phone or pick up your pen, contact the president of Mexico, and tell him to free our Marine. We're here to show support for the release of Sergeant um, Andrew Tamaresi, who's a Marine who served two tours of duty. He's been in a Mexican prison for over 100 days. Not a word from this president, not a word from the State Department, and we cannot allow this to happen. This is a travesty, and we're learning that when silence Silence in the face of evil is evil. Tell us a little bit about how this came together and, and why it came together. I, I read that over there had been over 300 incursions by the Mexican military over our border since 2004. And we have this poor Marine who goes down and gets in the wrong lane. There are two lanes down to Mexico, and he was in the one where you couldn't turn back. And they're holding him, he's now day 100, and I'm furious about it. And I got so mad, and I stood up at a meeting and said, I want to do something down at the Mexican consulate. We need to do something, because this is inexcusable. I mean, you know, and just recently the president went down, had a phone conversation with the president of Mexico and couldn't, couldn't speak about this guy. And uh, it's just, it's so, mad, it's so maddening to me. He had no business being arrested, and all he wanted to do was turn around and come back but they didn't let him. And, I, and I, I, I'm so angry at Mexico, I cannot tell you. I will never go there, ever. I'm here representing all Americans on what could happen to us just if we were to get lost on our own border, where other people could come into our border and be welcomed. We can't leave our own country without being demonized and a criminal felony. In this country, it's a misdemeanor. In their country, it's a felony to cross into Mexico without your proper papers and reason to be there. How did you end up here? I'm in sales, and I worry about my future and my home and my family and my property and my entire life. I mean, I can live to be 120 years old in a country that no longer exists. And this soldier that's over there locked in a jail, not getting the proper assistance, not getting the proper health care, not getting proper uh, anything, proper treatment, and his mother's trying to get him out. He's done, has no criminal record. He's served in the military. He could be you or me. He's young, healthy, and these people are threatening to kill him inside the jail. They want to rape him. 
They want to beat him. He's been stabbed, from what I understand, and now he's strapped to a gurney inside the prison and about to be moved into maximum security prison. That's how an American is treated. That's how the Americans are basically treated inside our own country, through words, and that's exactly what they do to us in their country. There's no hospitality in Mexico unless you're staying in a motel or a hotel. But as far as a person who is gets across the border, who's here for treatment down in California, and he is trying to get better and looking for a place to stay while he's getting better, he gets himself across the border by accident with no signage and a, probably a dirt road and could not find his way back properly once he realized it was too late. And he was only, I, from what I understand, he's only a half a mile or less into the border. Once he turned into it, he tried to go back and it was too late. Let's talk about freeing this uh, soldier. Recently, the cartel was given, one of the cartel drug dealers was given a visa by our own government in the last couple of weeks to come freely into the United States and bring his drugs and whatever else, including human slave trafficking. What brings you down in front of the consulate today? Well, I'm only 13 and I don't have much to say and I'm, I come from Texas and I don't know much about history, but I do know this military dude in prison is not what, where he should be. He should be out and he did nothing wrong besides take a wrong turn and he should not be in there and people don't realize that and they just throw him in prison like it's nothing. So I'm here to fight for what I think he should be out. He should be out. Okay. And I, I can, since you're only 13, I can assume that you don't do this professionally? No, of course not. Okay, and, and how did you arrive here today? Did your, your mother or father bring you? Uh, my grandma's friend brought me. Okay. You're welcome. I'm here to stand up for one Marine. Uh, obviously, our president doesn't care. I mean, where is he? We're Americans. We have to stand up and fight for this guy. And uh, how did you become aware of this? Or are you part of an organization that, that does this professionally? Or what, what's your background? Well, I wouldn't say professionally, but as a political activist, um, obviously I became aware of it that way and have been promoting the cause and trying to get more people to come out. What brings you down to the consulate today? What, what's all this about? I just feel like there is no voice on behalf of this government. I haven't seen any sign on this Marine's behalf to help facilitate his release. From the State Department, from the administration, even from Congress, I haven't seen one sign where this Marine, who has did two tours of duty and is an American war hero, to help free him from a Mexican prison. For the viewers, can you, can you kind of give us the, the background? How did he end up in prison in Mexico? Well, I watched the show on Greta Van Susteren where basically the roads are very confusing with the signage and all you have to do is get in the wrong designated lane and then the roads diverge and you can't, there's no going back. So once he realized, and he was in the middle of moving and had all his possessions in the truck, which included some firearms, and once he crossed over the line, he realized immediately what had happened and he declared himself as a U.S. Marine. He declared that he had guns in his truck. And from then on, he's been in their so-called legal system. But from what I see, it's absolutely disgraceful that we go to such means to free a deserter, but we do not free a decorated war hero who has done two brave tours of duty. It's, it's an outrage, and Americans ought to stand up and pay attention to these things and put enough pressure. There's been a petition with over 100,000 signatures to bring the administration's attention to this, and it's falling upon deaf ears, and it is a disgrace. And, and what do you hope happens today, and what do you ha hope happens as we go forward? Uh, what are you asking your government for, and what are you asking the, the government of Mexico for? I want the governor of Mexico to move him to a safer place immediately and then take off if he's restrained like they're saying he is. I want him off the restraints and I want him to be able to visit family and a lawyer more freely. And then I want the president to make phone calls down there. Look at the amount of criminals that have come in the United States. This person's not a criminal. He's a soldier of America. American soldier who's already served two to three terms in Afghanistan. And these people are treating him as if he was nothing but a drug dealer coming from America to deliver their drugs or get the drugs from the cartel. What do you hope happens as a result of, of this, uh, this demonstration today and uh, probably what are demonstrations across the nation, habit demonstrations across the nation? 
What do you hope to see the American government do, and what do you hope to see the Mexican government do? Well, number one, I'd like to hear the American government listen to we the people. I mean, we the people are out here speaking, and this is happening all over the United States, not just here in Georgia. Um, and as far as the Mexican government goes, they need to do the right thing. What do you hope the end result of this is? Well, I hope that he's out today. I got a lot of phone calls this morning, people saying, do we need to come? Because they heard on television that he was, his hearing was today and that his mother felt like he was going to get out. And I said, well, I'm going to be down there because he's not out till he's out. So I, you know, I think we might have had more if that hadn't come out on the news. Um, probably some more people, but I'm, I'm pleased with what we've got here. What exactly do you want from the Mexican government? What exactly do you want from the American government? Well, I heard on the news that the Mexican government is sort of tired of this issue. They're, uh, they're looking for a way out um, and safe face. This administration just needs to use some skills with negotiation and provide Mexico that. And we need to pave the way to get this brave American back. We're learning that when silence, silence in the face of evil is evil and we must show our support and demand the release of our soldier who served so honorably two tours of duty in Afghanistan. We have one Marine made a wrong turn, send him home.